So I've been asked how to make one of these Bbot simulators in Scratch. So I thought rather than sort of giving a list of instructions, I'd just walk you through this. Okay, so let's just move that across there. It's looking good. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is replace our cat sprite with something more appropriate. I'm going to paint a sprite here. So clicking on this, let's have an abstract representation of Bbot here. So I've got a yellow circle, not quite where I want it. Let's pop that there in the centre of the screen. Filling in with yellow paint. We'll paint some black stripes on here. One, two, and three. You could spend a little bit longer than this, I'm sure. And let's have a couple of little eyes going in here just so we can tell. I'm going to make this paintbrush a little bit thicker here, just so we can tell where the front of Bebot is. There's one, there's two. Okay, and everything moves to the right in Scratch. That's the default condition. So I've got my sprite here. Okay, over here, let's get rid of the cat. Say bye-bye to the cat. And so we've just got the one Bebot sprite. Okay. So we're going to, we could very, very simply write some instructions using the scratch blocks to move Bebop forward. There's 10 steps, there's another 10 steps, and so on. Um, Bebop is programmed so as to move forward its own length. So we kind of need to know how big this sprite is at this resolution. So because I'm working on a Mac, I can very easily just get a little marquee up here. I'm doing Apple Control Shift 4 which is my tool for doing a screenshot, and then I'm kind of just guesstimating. And you see the numbers there, 62 and 61, so it's around about 62 pixels, and we don't need that. So moving 62 pixels will move Bebop forward its own length. There we go. We can turn to the right 90 degrees. We can move forward 62 steps. We can turn to the left 90 degrees and move forward 62 steps. Now that's all very good. Um, it's helpful though to put these inside block commands so that we're abstracting the implementation of this move hidden underneath the definition of a new block for Bebot. So my maker block I'm going to say forward and that creates a new purple block and you see there's the block itself and then move forward just need to say move forward 62 steps and so now my program forward moves Bebop forward. Let's move it over here, move forward, move forward, move forward, and so on. And we can do the same thing for other commands. So make a block. Let's do backwards now and define that. And this is going to be move minus 62 steps, which will be equivalent. Okay, so let's move backwards, and he moves back exactly the same distance. OK, we've got a couple more to do here, so make a block, turn left. we better call it turn left, because of course that's what Bebop does. Make a block, turn left, and there's my turn left 90 degrees. So there he goes, facing up. And then finally, make a block, turn right. And that's going to be a very similar thing. So there we go. That's all of that done for Bebot. So forward, if we wanted to do a square, we could do forward, turn right, duplicate, duplicate, and then we've got four sides of a square. Let's run that. And there he goes. He moves so quickly you hardly notice that. And that's kind of the problem with these commands, that what we're doing is just making him move 62 steps, making him turn 90 degrees. The Bebot simulator I've written or emulator I've written, actually shows the movement. Now you can do that in Scratch. But what we have to do is replace our move 62 with something a little bit more sophisticated. So what I'm going to do here is replace this moving 62 with, let's say, repeat 20 times, moving 1 20th of that total distance. So 62 over 20. We should be able to work that out in our heads, of course. That's going to be 3.1 steps. At each, at each tick of the scratch clock. Repeat 20 times, moving 3.1 steps each time. Let's run that move forward command. And there you actually see Bebop moving 
those tiny, tiny wee steps. Okay, and a similar sort of thing will happen over here for the move back. So we're going to duplicate that, repeat 20 times, moving backwards. 3.1 steps, let's run that code. There we go, he moves backwards. Similar sort of thing going on with turn left and turn right. Again, we'll do that in little steps. So repeating 20 times and 90 divided by 20 should be 4.5 degrees at each tick of the scratch clock. And a similar sort of thing going on for the turn right. Repeat 20 times, turn right 4.5 degrees. Now when I run my little program for a square, we get to actually see Bebot trundling around a square. Isn't that gorgeous? Of course, we can simplify this program because we have the same command repeated here. So repeat four times forward, turn right should be equivalent. Yay. And something you can do with the Bebot on screen that it's much harder to do, of course, on uh, with a real Bebot is have it draw a pen. So, oops. Sorry, that's me clicking in the wrong place. Put the pen down, pick the pen up at the end, clear the screen to start with, and now let's run that code. And we see that Bebot did indeed trace out a square there. How cool is that? Um, there are a couple of other things which you could do. So one of the commands you've got on a Bebot is, I think, a pause command, make a block to pause and define that as, I beg your pardon, just wait for a second. So we could, in our command here, add in a pause at the end of this. There's also a beep that Bebop plays at the end of a sequence of commands, and you could have it playing a little beep sound. We have some sounds programmed in here. Play note for 0.5 seconds, or we could just define a beep block Okay, let's um, have that. That's on the forward, and do the same thing for each of these. Okay, and now let's run the code. That's going to get quite annoying after a little while, so we'll get rid of those playing out commands. I don't think there's really very much more to it than that, but of course you can then create scenarios on screen for Bebot to solve, or you can move it from one place to another place. What are the commands that move Bebot from this square to another square all becomes something which we could code up using these commands. The one other thing which I did was to hide the block commands down the bottom of the screen here so that they are available. They have to be available. But you might not want to confuse year one, year two with that level of sophistication so that all they need is just the commands themselves. Here we go. There we go. And notice the pause at the end of each step. Okay, I hope that explains what you were looking for.